Hello, my name is Fran Sands. Welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. Um, we're going to look today at uh, Terence Crawford, and we're going to look at five fearsome factors about the Terence Crawford boxing technique. He's a welterweight from Omaha, Nebraska, Southpaw, widely regarded now as one of the top pound for pound fighters in the world. You know, he's uh, he's a, he's a, he's an amazing operator. And, you know, I've done one of these videos before. I did one uh, a little while ago on Naoa Inui, and people, I think, got quite a bit from it. But, you know, what I hope for these videos is that you are able to pick something up. And regardless of, of whether you're brand new to the game or whether, you know, you've, you, you've got a, a little bit of experience under your belt, you're able to use some of this stuff to bring your boxing training to life and maybe apply it in, in some spas and stuff. Okay, so I'll jump straight in with five fearsome factors. Fearsome factor number one about Terence Crawford, and like with most things in boxing, I always start with the stance. I think most coaches do, they'll tell you that. Um, you look at the stance, you look at how it's formed, foot position. There's, all, there's a bunch of different stances in boxing, and they all vary from foot position to body form, and weight distribution. So three factors generally that govern the, the, the different types of boxing stance that you can use. In terms of Crawford, he's a southpaw, so right leg forward. He's When he's in the southpaw stance, he is someone who uh, boxes out of the orthodox stance as well. I'm going to come on to that. Whilst he's in a southpaw stance, his shoulders are beautifully aligned. They point towards where the threat is. So he's in a nice, solid position. Now, here's the key point. It's about his head alignment. You can see now my head is aligned to this center line on the floor, okay? Perfectly fine. His body weight also, sorry, tends to be central, okay? Whereas in the previous video with the Nui, some boxers like to just distribute their weight very slightly forward. It favors those who um, want to trigger the opponent and it's a good technique for counterpunching. Inui's body weight is just slightly forward, he's orthodox. But with um, Crawford, it's where the body weight's central, and if I look at my headline being central, what he actually does, he aligns his head with his rear foot. Whether he's aware of this or not, I do not know. But the remarkably effective thing about this is if your head's central and your southpaw, Often Southpaw and Orthodox, you get a battle of the lead hand, some people trying to get the lead hand working, get the jab working. As a boxer, you really want your jab, you really want a reasonable rate of success with your jab, otherwise it's really quite demoralising. If you can't even settle into getting your jab working, it kind of undermines a lot of other stuff in your, in your um, tactics. Because Crawford has his head slightly off and aligned with his rear foot, it takes his head about three inches away from the jab, which means that orthodox opponents have to almost overcommit. He's a master at this. He gets opponents to overcommit constantly, regardless of the style of the opponent. And this is because he's got this head, or partly because his head is aligned off the centre line to the rear foot. And it's a brilliant technique of his style, or brilliant trait of his style but whether he knows it or probably does obviously he's a top operator but i just think it's fantastic now you could say oh but he's south but he's moving towards the opponent an orthodox opponent's powerful backhand well because his head's moving that way he also moves very slightly away so he's taking himself away about an inch these are all tiny margins but they are the margins that matter. So because that head is off the centre line, his stance is beautifully balanced, body weight central, head off the centre line, he's a master at getting the opponent to overcommit. Really smart aspect of his style. Number two, he is a straight line fighter. Now, I don't you know, jump up in arms about this, but just something I've noticed, I'm going to switch to, to orthodox just to demonstrate this because I you know don't feel terribly comfortable demonstrating in Southport. I can do it but let's not go there. Um 
he uses minimal head movements. I'm not saying that as a criticism. It's just not a criticism. He he uses lateral movement with his feet as he disengages and, and moves the, around the ring. But when he's in contact, you watch him. He's he's a straight line fighter. He likes to come out and in, in, use straight lines. He keeps a good defense. Occasionally he gets tagged. But what the expertise of Crawford is, it's all about range. He understands range to the millimetre. So he doesn't, he doesn't do a lot of this. Any head movement off that centre line is very subtle. So he doesn't have to, you know, he, he doesn't really, maybe he considers it a waste of energy because he's got good reactions, he's got good speed and he can be out and still dominating with straight shots and indeed with hooks. So he does lots of straight line movements, boom, boom, just there. And if the opponent rushes, he'll cover and then back. But he's all about range, straight line fighter. Really interesting, you don't see that a lot. Again, another fairly unique aspect of the Crawford style. Um, fearsome factor number three, he is versatile. He has something for everyone, any opponent. I remember seeing a, uh, an interview with Marvin Hagler. He did okay, didn't he, Hagler? Um, and the interviewer asked him, what was your, you, what do you consider to be your, your best characteristic? And he said versatility. Crawford is the same. He's very versatile. He can do a bunch of stuff. I'm going to demonstrate uh, now why that is now. I'll use his stance switch to demonstrate this. Um, we talked about his southpaw stance and his head off the centre line. Shoulders beautifully aligned towards where the threat is, so he's side on. He switches southpaw a lot, okay? And his head doesn't go off the centre line, really. Occasionally it does, but it kind of remains centre. But more importantly, his upper body is more opened okay he's not as aligned side on his upper body is more opened this allows him this square slightly square upper half he's still got the side on stance line going from the toe on the front foot to the heel on the back but it allows him to open up to incoming boxes he's a he's a really active puncher so when shots come in he doesn't want shots to go on into in fact he wants to land his shots as the opponent's shots are, are out. So he can kind of turn and do this kind of thing. The opponent is, you know, he's favoring this hand, you know, turning the upper body. So that switch from southpaw to orthodox, not only is it a switch, he's like an entirely different fighter. He's going from one extreme to another, totally different body shape. Similar weight distribution, body weight central, but opened up that upper half. And he can do this against tall fighters, short fighters, roughhouse tactics, counter punches, you name it. You know, he has this ability to just be versatile in the face of opposition. Face of factor number four, his cadence, his rhythm. He's like... He's like rain. He's like water erosion, right? He's steady. All the time, jabbing and triggering. All the time, keeping pressure on. All the time. And then, he'll unleash with a torrential downpour. So he'll unleash with fearsome hooks. Not necessarily, you know, six or ten of them or whatever. But he changes that pace, that... He goes from that drip, drip, drip of pressure, of just keeping the opponent there, keeping them there, and then he'll unleash them hooks. Powerful puncher. I call it going up and down the gears. It's a really great trait for you to have um, if you're doing boxing training and if you're involved in boxing. That ability to move up and down the gears is key. Being one pace kind of puts you in a predictable category. So so aim to be able to 
switch up and go from first, second, third, fourth, move up and down gears. Crawford does that beautifully well. Tied him at that, and he will back off. You know, it's, it's not constant. He's, he's happy to, you know, shift position, reset, move back in. And again, start the rain falling again. Um, fearsome factor number five, simplicity. No overcomplication in the Crawford style. He's not, you know, doing all kinds of shift and position and this, that and the other. He can do that in his sleep. He has got every skill in the locker. He can pivot. He can. I could go through all of his fights and I could pick out 60 plus individual skills. But they're not the mainstay of what he does. The mainstay of what he does is simplicity. He doesn't overcomplicate. He does the basics extremely well. 90%, 95% of what top fighters do are the basics. They just do them very well. Terence Crawford is the epitome of that. Okay? There's five fearsome factors for Terence Crawford. Download the beginner boxer toolkit. Um, allows you to revisit all kinds of aspects of your style. Seven tools from shadow boxing through heavy bag, through strength and conditioning, and through all the core skills to help you really hone your boxing style and your boxing training. Subscribe. Otherwise, my name is Franz Sands and this is mybexingcoach.com. Thank you.